Now in today's video we're going to be putting AMD to the test because for as long as we've known AMD have always been the go-to for the budget gamers particularly when building an entry-level gaming PC but can the same still be said for the latest generations well to find that out we're going to be building a budget all AMD gaming PC on their latest generation stuff and we're going to see exactly what you get for your money. Now, like I say, the build that we're going to be doing today is a budget all AMD gaming PC, and it's actually going to be using their latest generation of parts. Not all of the parts in this system are the lowest prices, although they probably were when we actually managed to pick them up. So that's a bit of a bonus to some people. But we are going for a nice little compact system with no RGB. So for those of you out there that are fans of no RGB or fancy colors, this kind of system is going to be perfect for you. For the parts that we're going to go for this, of course, we're going to go with their latest generation platform. So that is an AM5. And the first thing that we're going to be looking at is, of course, the CPU. The CPU we're going to be using in this build is the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, there is a reason that I picked this one up over the 7600, and that is because when I actually came to purchase this one, it was actually cheaper than the lower spec 7600. So this is obviously a choice that you need to make, but you won't get a cooler with it. So you'll need to, of course, throw that in there. We, of course, got a different cooler for this one because we wanted something a little bit cooler. You could save a little bit of money if you did go for the 7600, particularly when it came to the cooling solution but this is the one we're going to go for i think it's a great cpu six core 12 thread and it's more than enough to pretty much power any game out there today for the motherboard we're going for something super basic this is just a basic msi pro a620 me these motherboards don't cost you that much at all although they are more expensive than the older generation boards and they are very basic you only get two dim slots things like that it will take the cpu and it will take a lot of other modern cpus so you do have an upgrade path with this but you are going to be slightly limited on some features particularly in things like the quality of the vrms and stuff Stuff. but to be honest for the budget gamer they're not going to really care about that kind of stuff as long as it works as long as it gets you booted up and running and it gets your games running that's generally perfectly fine it is a micro atx board so it is a little bit smaller than the atx board you'll find out there so of course we need something that will actually go very nice with this and we are going to build a compact system so we're going to go with a micro atx case as well for memory we have also gone for something quite basic this is just some bog standard corsair vengeance ddr5 of course when building an am5 system you will have to use ddr5 there is no ddr4 boards for these so you're going to have to pay a little bit more for your memory here ddr4 is super cheap at the moment so if you are building a budget system it's probably better to either look at the intel side or maybe the older amd am4 range but you won't have as much life in it because it's not going to be very future proof so ddr5 is the way to go for the system just like this and we have opted for 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz now 5600 megahertz is pretty standard it's going to work perfectly fine with this system and 32 gigabytes should probably be the minimum that anybody looks at at the moment you can find 16 gigabyte kits and they are slightly cheaper than this they generally do seem a little bit rarer so this is going to be easy to obtain and it's going to give you a little bit more future in the system for the cooler we are going for the arctic liquid freezer 3 240 black this is a non-rgb cooler and it should be more than enough to actually cope with this cpu and it's going to look fantastic in the case this was actually sent to us by arctic when we originally did our review on it so i want to thank arctic for supporting this video by allowing us to use it on this one i think it's going to look great in the system and hopefully it will fit in the case perfectly fine but i'm pretty sure it will and at least you're going to have some kind of future here these coolers only do fit with things like am4 am5 and as well as the lga 1700 so if you're going to be using an older system you're not going to be able to use one of these but for the system that we're putting together it's going to be perfectly fine then we of course come to the graphics card now for graphics cards we are going to go for this sapphire radeon rx 7600 this is one of the cheapest graphics cards from amd at the moment particularly on their latest generation it may not be the best choice if you are building a budget gaming pc because you can always go with a slightly older generation but of course we're building a PC here on the latest generation stuff and we're going to see what they've got. It is a reasonably decent graphics card. We have recently tested this on its own in our benching rig and it performed exceptionally well. So hopefully the combination of this and this CPU are going to work perfectly fine. Now with everything else actually going up in price recently, power supplies have also been one of those things that have not really survived it kind of thing. You will generally get power supplies out there at all different ranges of prices, but trying to find something on a budget is quite difficult. So I've actually opted for something like this. This is probably not the best branded power supply out there, but it should be perfectly fine. It is a Game Max RGB 
power supply we're not going to be turning the rgb on this it is a 550 watt 80 plus gold and it is also a fully modular unit i wanted a fully mod unit for this one because the storage that we're going to be using with this is a one terabyte drive it's an nvme that's already attached to the board and it is from crucial it's a p3 one terabyte drive generation three of course but it keeps the price down we don't need any extra power cables so we can keep all of that out of the system i'm not 100 percent sure how good game max power supplies are they do seem to be everywhere and they're not actually as cheap as you think but they are decently priced particularly for a model like this but we're going to be using this one and i'm sure it'll be perfectly fine too the last piece in our budget all amd system is of course the case and like i said before we wanted to go with something that's reasonably compact but will provide a very decent airflow and for that i've chosen this this is a Techware Nexus Air M2. These are actually pretty decent cases and they've got some fantastic features which we'll show you when we get it out of the box. You won't pay a lot for these at all. They are reasonably cheap and they've got some really cool features and they should be enough to actually mount all of this in there and look like a pretty decent non-RGB system in a compact format. So all we need to do now is actually just put the system together. So I actually think this system turned out really nice. It is a nice little small compact system. That's pretty much got everything that you need. We've got some decent airflow in there. We've got a pretty decent cooler on there. So that airflow is actually going to do something nice. The graphics card fits into the system really nicely. Although I don't think you're going to have much room for upgrading going forward. Of course, you can always put extra storage in here because the case will take SSDs. You can always change out your NVMe drive for a bigger one. So that's absolutely not a problem. But if you do come to upgrade your graphics card to something bigger, you're probably going to struggle. And a lot of it is down to the depth of that cooler in there. It is also a little bit of a shame that the cooler does have some quite long pipes here. So we have to literally just go over the top and round and under. It's just the way that these Arctic coolers fit, but everything seems to work well and it seems to look pretty nice. But then how much did this system cost? When it comes to the CPU, of course, we've got the Ryzen 5 7600X. That will actually set you back around 200 pounds at the moment. You can pick up the 7600 a little bit cheaper now for about 180, but at the time of purchasing this, that was actually the cheapest. The discounts on the 7600 recently have been a welcome change. The MSI Pro A620e motherboard will set you back about £85. That is a little bit of a shame because back in the day you could get A-series motherboards for AM4 for around £30 to £35. They would have been exactly the same specs of this board pretty much. You would have got an NVMe slot, you'd have got the same kind of headers, all that kind of stuff. So this is one place where a modern AMD system really does start to uh, increase in price for the ram of course we've got the kit of corsair vengeance 32 gigabytes that will actually set you back around 95 pounds at the moment particularly for the speeds that we bought which again is quite a bit more expensive than ddr4 if am5 had supported ddr4 you could pretty much halve that there because 
You can pick up 32 gigabyte kits now for around 45 to 50 pounds when it comes to DDR4, but unfortunately DDR5 is another thing. The crucial one terabyte NVMe drive will set you back about 40 pounds. That's pretty average nowadays for a one terabyte drive. It is a PCI Gen 3 drive. You could actually go a little bit higher and get something like a PCI Gen 4, but you probably won't really see much of a difference in speed. The graphics card is the Sapphire Radeon RX 7600 8GB and that will set you back currently around £250. It is a little bit of a shame at the moment that there isn't anything lower than that from AMD, particularly when it comes to price, but the 7600 is a pretty decent GPU. For the Techware Nexus Air M2 case, you'll pay around £30, which isn't too bad. And the Game Max RGB 550 watt gold fully modular power supply are around £50. That seems about average for a medium branded power supply nowadays. Some people won't touch them, but of course, if you're on a budget, you kind of need to go that way. And at least it is a gold rated power supply, so you shouldn't have any issues there. And then, of course, the last piece in the puzzle was the Arctic Freezer 3 240mm. These will currently set you back around £50, and that's because they are on a deal. I wouldn't necessarily say you should go out and get one when they're not on deals once they go back up to their normal price. A simple air cooler for a system like this could suffice, and the Arctic air coolers are actually pretty good too, so that is another option that you could go for. That brings a grand total of this system to £800, which really doesn't seem that cheap at all. It kind of just goes to show what four or five years can actually do to the prices of components. This is probably around double the price that you would have paid for something back then of similar performance back in the day. Of course, this is going to be a lot faster. It's a lot newer gen. Everything's a lot faster. And that is one thing that systems like this have going for them. Of course, prices of components have increased over the years, but so has the performance. These systems will perform way better than something back then we actually did a little bit of testing on this and we can reassure you that for a 1080p system which is really what it's geared up towards you will have no problems at all in games like robocop rogue city you can actually get a pretty decent performance here even in 1440p during our testing we tested it in 1440p with a high preset and enabled fsr3 with a quality setting plus a frame generation and you can easily get 100 fps plus alan wake 2 which is probably one of the most demanding games out there on the market at the moment again still played perfectly fine at 1440p all we had to do was just drop the settings down to a medium which really didn't have that much of an effect on screen quality and enable fsr2 with a quality setting with this you would get around 60 fps an even newer title here in the form of horizon forbidden west you can actually play this game again perfectly fine in 1440p all you have to do again is just drop those settings down to medium which really doesn't have that much of an effect the game is absolutely gorgeous either way and enable fsr 2.2 with a quality setting with these settings you will see a good 80 fps plus so of course if this system can actually play those games at 1440p with a slight tweak to settings and the enabling of things like fsr you're gonna have a great experience with it it is a shame that it will cost you so much to build this kind of stuff nowadays but it really does go to show how far amd have come because they may not be the go-to budget brand when it comes to price but the performance for what you're getting at their lower end is absolutely amazing. Let me know what you think about this system in the comments below. Would you build a system like this or do you actually currently have a system like this? If I was to actually change anything on this going forward, I would actually probably use a bigger case. I do love this little case when it comes to compact PCs, but fitting things in like this cooler was a little bit awkward and I would have liked a little bit more space to be able to get extra fans and things in there. Maybe we will do a transplant at some point. I'm not quite sure. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that because I'm sure we'll probably do it and i'm sure as always catch you guys in the next one